Man, Notion pretty much broke me recently. That and running a business. No, but in all seriousness, guys, there, there was a serious issue that happened that I'm really grateful that Notion's fixed recently. Um, there's been a lot of updates. Uh, I haven't made a video like this in a while. I'm gonna get back to making it, but um, it, it's been pretty frustrating. So Notion introduced agents recently. I actually covered this on my podcast, the AI Agents Podcast. Really cool stuff I'm doing over there if you wanna check that out and if you're into AI and stuff. So I'm not gonna get into that here, but what I am gonna get into is a little bit of the database type of uh, stuff. Like attendees or people in certain departments, they could see different databases. And that's really important because what that gives us is it gives the ability for mass invites to kind of be easier by adding people to certain sections. So you can control exactly who sees rows in your database with page level access. You can keep tasks visible to who they're assigned to, collaborate easily with consultants and clients, and keep sensitive info from getting in the wrong hands. So it's available for business and enterprise plans, so it's really cool for people like me. They listed their, they expanded their list of first party MCP integrations, which is big, and the Claude, Sonnet 4, and GPT-5 models are now inside of their tool. Um, there is some improvements in some other areas like Notion AI will rewrite your formulas. Honestly, I still don't really use Notion AI because of the fact that I could just copy and paste stuff into the different tools that exist outside of it and then get context. Like I fixed a formula by asking Claude Sonnet 4.5 what can be fixed, but I do appreciate that the agent's improvements are pretty big. But let's talk about something that's actually a little bit more specific to what a lot of you probably are wondering about. And, and this is the database type stuff. So if we go to a specific task database that I have, or any of the different databases that I have, if I go to my personal task database, there is the ability to manage data sources now. So they added this recently. And essentially what it is, is it is the ability to take <laughs> your different databases and actually like add things into them. So databases are now the main source entity and then you have data source, data source that you can spread out to. That's really intriguing. If I make a new database and I say new empty source, I could do that or I could do link to existing data source. So I have my external and my internal content calendars. As you can see, I'm basically just switching the different data sources here. And I don't really want to, for any of the real stuff I have, mess it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a template and kind of show how you can mix and match a couple different things. So if I go to um, database full page and I'm gonna make a task tracker real quick, and then I'm gonna make another database here that maybe would be like a bug tracker or something. Or a, let's see what else we got. Let's see, bug tracker, issue tracker. Okay, nice. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add this task tracker, the all task view. And what you'll see is we have multiple data sources. So this is link existing data source. We can add another data source, like a document hub or something like that. This is part of the reason it broke me because it's pretty confusing. Let's say projects and documents slash tasks. So we got three things here going. Projects, docs, tasks. It's all over the place, right? We got many different um, sources here. We got three different sources. But as you can see, this was linked, right? So it's kind of an interesting situation here where I'm like, okay, wait a second, this is this is linked. Whereas this one, as you can see, is clearly, um, so I'd actually have to add a data source that's like new. Or you could press link to existing data source. But once again, this is a linked source. It's very interesting. They like change the hierarchy in such a way, in my opinion, which is kind of confusing. And Kai, I don't really know what the point is, if we're being completely honest. Like, I don't really feel like this is a incredible improvement. Um, so I'm gonna delete these extra views real quick. And I'm gonna add a new task database here. So I'm gonna need a new data source, a task tracker. So I'm making this from scratch. All right, cool. So now this isn't called the database anymore. This is a data source. And then the thing that's connecting and holding all of them in is the database. All right. And a key thing to note here as well is that permissions are set at the database level, not the data source level. So say you want to have a database of a bunch of different data sources, which is what databases used to be. 
you can invite people to multiple things at once. So it does kind of give you an interesting mass invite capability if you're not on one of the more higher tiered plans. Now, um, that's for kind of the old retro users that do mass invites still. But it's interesting how these all need to kind of work together still. And I, I kind of, I got to explain, and Thomas Frank did a good job of explaining this, of what it's not. What we used to think is databases, so data sources, and putting it into one unified view, right? Like that would make sense but it's not. <laughs> and that's what I feel like a lot of people probably thought it was. And that's what I thought initially would be what they're like, oh, data sources and then databases at the top were bringing all the different previously called databases and now bringing it all together into one unified monolith of a database with different cross references. Uh, not quite the way that you'd think about it in like one view. As you can see, when I click between views, I'm switching sources. As Thomas Frank even pointed out in the video, Notion said database has got more powerful. You can now parent multiple data sources in a single database and add linked views too. One place, many sources, a true hub for your workflow. It's not a master rows view situation. It's not a master view. People want this feature. I've made this feature using automations to have things sync up together. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to make it. So I, I don't blame Notion for not having it, to be honest. It's one of my few things I won't be critical of. But what I will point out is as they were trying to put this together and they were changing the infrastructure, my Notion databases were so inconsistent, we were having problems getting task viewed on my team. And it was frankly making me pretty upset. So I'm glad they finished it because now databases are working smoothly again. And actually, you know what? I kind of did something pretty silly earlier. Um, I didn't actually know this was a capability. Uh, but I wanted to show you something where I, you know, how I had previously kind of moved things source wise. Are you kidding me? Uh, that's amazing. Sure. You've been able to like add a new view and that view is grabbed from, you know, this pre list and that's nice for linked views, but that's incredible. I, I really am a fan of that. That's a big hack. And as you saw, I could have selected only moving the data source, not the view. And this is a key thing that's going to impact people like me who are using, um, I guess automations at scale. Make.com is not quite there for this, but basically database IDs. That's the only thing that's really going to change is the API is going to have some differences to it pre than previous. Um, kind of a fan of the fact that they did change the structure overall and how it'll impact automations will be interesting. Now, once again, not to just copy Thomas Frank, but this is a really good graph and I want to give him credit where credit is due. His claim here is that data sources are essentially a thing that wasn't a page inside of Notion the whole time. And it was kind of sitting there as what the database was. It was like a layer between the database and the pages. So everything in Notion is a block, right? When I drag anything inside of any page, we have blocks, right? That's why if you're ever using APIs type of capabilities, you understand how annoying it is to get a pages full like data set here because you have to extract every single block. And then the page is a block that then goes into a database. And as you can see, as you make more views, it kind of like has more views and showcases. And now what it has is kind of this referential to data sources. And, and you know what I think is interesting about this is mainly the aspect of it where it changes the view, accidentally share extra data sources. There could be problems. Obviously, it's good for people who know what they're doing, but people who don't, kind of concerning. Most people still show stuff through linked views anyways. Um, if they are sharing views. So I do think it's kind of weird and it's putting all of it into one quote database, even if there's a linked view that's in there, because you can add linked views here. You can go here, you can go to sources and you can go to an existing source, right? And you can add, um, let me find a useless database. If I make a goals tracker, not saying that's useless, but this exact instances. If I go here and I go to sources and I link an existing data source, Right, I'm linking this and I'm getting the view and it's a linked view. I guess it works. It just kind of feels like I it added a layer on top for maybe ease of organization purposes. Honestly, it's like a solo data source. It only becomes a database if I aggregate different data sources, right? Because if there's one in there, it's just one data source. I took a separate data source, added it to the database as a linked view. Right. And essentially, since it's just one data source, it's its own database. So the multiple different databases that I have here for the projects, document hub, task tracker, brainstorming, the ones that don't have that link are all basically on this left hand side. Whereas this one, the goals is the linked one. It's not it doesn't even have a solo data source, but it, it basically it's called a database if it's by itself. But if there's multiple data sources, if multiple databases, then it kind of changes that name entity to data source and I'd have a link view in that one uh, parent 
view or parent page, I guess you could say, as he as he shows it. And I, I would recommend the same thing Thomas did. Like, I'm not going to recommend anybody like use this to kind of navigate and move their databases around because the API isn't updated in any of the major products. And I'm not really quite sure what practically people are going to do, except confuse themselves uh, for a little bit, especially for client facing stuff. So if you're doing personal productivity, you want to play around, definitely try it, see how it can help. Um, but I, I just think they kind of spent months working on something that a little amount of people are going to use. And then their power users kind of had their databases broken for like two months. So that's why it almost broke me, kind of made me upset. And I, I'm very glad that, um, it's over, but that was one of the reasons I was kind of done with notion for a little while. I was like, I literally can't use this thing and my team can't either. So kudos to them for fixing it. Hopefully this taught you that this is essentially a cool ish feature that doesn't really do much. If you liked this video and want to check out more, make sure to hit that video like button and subscribe. See you in the next one.